peace to each one of you. Now, at the outset, I extend a warm welcome to each one of you to this Holy Eucharist. Before the Holy Eucharist, we have the inauguration and the blessing of the new grotto. All the fathers and the donors of this grotto will come forward for the inauguration and blessing. सर्गिन चाबो मोगल बापा मोरिये पाए थे 
Varsore tu je povi tri sebeke, nove adjivita so borgoso te laj. Azami ti ka amči adr šimunano getao. Ja ti ka rupne ker tu zo ašir vadgal, te šensi. Hanga se rupad lo groto, ta keri tu je besao gal. Ami povitrita ente vadonku amka adar di. Ashe yatri kank amka sergin cha raja ke vav pavonku ani tika rupro po polonku amka pavonku yami maktao tuja puta jizu ke nabi. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today, the 8th of December, the Church celebrates the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is a solemnity for the church. This is the feast. This is 
the one of the articles of faith in the year 1854 pope pius the 9th on 8th of december declared this feast mary is conceived without the original sin no stain of sin was there in her soul and that was considered as the article of faith he declared it to the entire universal church and that feast we celebrate today and we honor our blessed mother for this great privilege the lord had bestowed on her in anticipation of her great call to be the mother of the son of god whom she welcomed into the world offering her own womb to be his place to come into the world we are grateful to the lord for choosing mary as his mother who is also our mother let us now thank the lord for this great event and not only that for giving us our blessed mother as our mother with these thoughts let us prepare ourselves to offer this sacrifice asking the lord's pardon for our sins together let us say i confess to, to almighty god, god and to you my, brother my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore i ask blessed mary of the virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen
let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. I will put enmity between your offspring and her offspring. A reading from the book of Genesis. After Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock, and above all the beasts of the field, on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he Marvelous deeds Sing to the Lord a new song For he has done marvelous deeds Sing to the Lord a new song For he has done marvelous deeds Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done wondrous deeds His right hand has won victory for him He is holy oh. Sing to the Lord a new song For he has done wondrous The ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you land. Break into song.
reading, God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month, and, a, and with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are celebrating the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. I was asking some students the other day, what do you understand by Immaculate Conception? And they had different perceptions of this. Many of them ended up saying that uh, Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb and it, that conception was immaculate. It is basically pertaining 
many Catholics also, I ask that in a family too, many Catholics have a wrong understanding. It is Mary who was conceived in the womb of Saint Anne, her mother, without original sin. And that is, that is what it is. But then we may ask a question, what is the significance of this for us? What is the relevance for us? Let us understand our very context. Our context is terrible. They say one leak is enough for a ship to be sunk. Similarly, one sin and the tendency to sin is enough to destroy a sinner. The concept of sin itself does not exist in today's society. Many people have a, an idea that this is all concocted, something that is concocted by people. People laugh at us. There are groups of adults who will laugh and say, what is sin? They feel all these things, especially the virtues of chastity and purity, are just a joke. They ask for a free reign of passion to be given, give, you know, given to passion. And so there is no meaning to it. Adolescents laugh at the debasing influence of sin. There are married couples who laugh at this whole concept of stability in marriage, of the sanctity of marriage. Although it is really intended by God, they wouldn't accept this concept. There are abortionists who laugh at the very notion of the sacredness of life. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, sin is real. Probably the very fact that people don't accept the notion of sin itself is a big sin. But today's feast, when we have, see, look at today's feast, it is not so much to concentrate on the evils, but rather to contemplate the goodness of God. That is what we are doing here. The human race has fallen from original grace, as you heard it in the first reading. It fell from human, uh, from the original grace. But the truth is that it rose again. And rose again from this fallen state because of Christ who died on the cross. And so we are free. We are people who are free. The work of redemption, you see what happens uh, in the gospel, uh, in, in the first reading. There is a tree and they eat the fruit of the tree. There is a tree involved. But the redemption, the work of redemption begins with another tree, the wood of the cross. In the Genesis episode, once again, there is an angel which banishes Adam and Eve from the garden of Eden. And therefore, there is a sign of sin and death, announcing of sin and death for those who sin. But here again, in the gospel, you have got an angel who appears to bring announce the light and salvation to mankind. Similarly, there's a man and a woman involved in the Genesis story, Adam and Eve as we call them. It's all about disobedience, about sin and death. But as a contrast here in the plan of redemption, once again you've got a woman, a virgin, through whom comes Jesus, the second Adam. Jesus, and therefore it is very fitting that the mother of this divine saviour is sinless. So therefore it is an honour that we give her. And yet the honour is not in our meditation and the concentration of her sinlessness, but rather it is on the contemplation of her fullness of grace. Hail, full of grace, that's what the angel says. Hail, full of grace. And we say this often. Hail Mary, full of grace. She's full of grace. And the fullness of grace is what we celebrate. Fullness of grace can become a mystery to us. We will, may not be able to understand what is this fullness of grace. I would like to put forward to you a kind of an example. You might have seen, nowadays you don't see very much the potters, and yet you might have seen it somewhere or the other, where the potter sits at his wheel with the clay in the middle of the wheel there. 
the potter throws a lump of clay on the wheel and at one particular point as the wheel keeps moving the clay becomes you know centered it centers and then it spins it spins gently and smoothly beneath the fingers of the potter finally you see a deep harmony between the potter and the clay all the all the time the sand particles the very very fine smooth sand particles uh, which form the clay they move you know they move in a particular direction together focused in that particular direction it is then that you feel that the whole clay is centered and then the potter can form any shape that he wants i feel immaculate conception is something like that mary's fullness of grace where it is totally focused where every fiber of a being turned turned to god's word completely a flawlessness of that clay you know every impurity is removed and therefore the flawlessness of clay in potter's hand that is what mary is the flawlessness of clay which is allowing herself uh, to move in the direction where god wants her to move that is the beauty of it and so therefore we celebrate god centeredness of mary in this feast the focus is not so much on the human race and the fall from grace but rather the rising rising to the salvation that is what it is and therefore not the sinlessness of mary but the god filled life of mary we also look at ourselves when we, when this happens we look at ourselves yes we are human we make mistakes but there's something more than that although we feel sometimes very foolish about our mistakes guilty perhaps sometimes embarrassed ashamed of our sinfulness and yet let us not stop there we go beyond that because mary's immaculate conception is a clear proof for us that no matter what there is hope for us no matter what kind of a sinner we are sinners what kind of sinners we are there is still hope and that is the beauty of our devotion to our, to mary our mother who is the refuge of all sinners a story is told of a priest a priest who was sent to a criminal who was on the death row and he was to be sentenced to death so therefore before being sentenced to death they normally send a priest uh, who can talk to especially abroad they send the priest depending on the religion uh, who can talk to him and calm him down so that he can experience um, the fact that he is going back to god and so there was this priest who was trying to save the soul of this sinner and the man refused to speak to him no matter how much he tried to plead with him and begged him and yet that man refused to talk to him he live alone talking even didn't even want to look at the face of that priest his heart was closed he was angry bitter and therefore he didn't want to look at the priest and finally the priest gives a last try he whispers a prayer to the blessed virgin mary and he tells him can you give me do me one favor one favor he looks at the priest he accepts to do that he says okay because he wants to get rid of this irritating priest who is so bothersome so he accepts it he looks at him and then the priest says would you mind saying one hail mary with me and he closes his eyes as the prisoner just accepts and he begins saying hail mary full of grace the lord is with you he says it very very slowly and when he says it slowly this man's face becomes pale slowly he starts shaking and very soon by the time he can continue with the hail mary 
his eyes begin to smart he starts weeping and he falls on his knees and starts sobbing loudly thereafter he is willing to do his confession he is willing to accept whatever the priest says and all because that hail mary ignited a spark of repentance in him brothers and sisters that is what mary does to us she is what it's she is a refuge of all sinners no matter how great our sin is she is there to for, to, to show us the path to forgiveness which and mercy which the lord is willing to give her son came to proclaim that and so through her sinlessness she draws us to herself and to her son jesus that is what we learn from her her innocence her obedience to god that is what taught us how to go ahead in our christian life let us not forget that it was not a singular grace given only to her yes at her conception she was given this uh, grace but this grace is also available to us in our baptism and through the sacraments this grace is available to us it's only that we need to be aware of this grace that is given to us and live accordingly let's ask god for that grace let's ask god let's plead with our mary to intercede for us and obtain that grace of repentance for us so that we turn towards god and become sinless like her innocent like her obedient to god's will like her let us recite the profession of our faith i believe in god the father almighty the creator of heaven and earth and in I jesus christ his only son our lord he was conceived by the power of the holy, the holy spirit, spirit was born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of god the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and life everlasting amen brothers and sisters we believe that god our father is always granting to us what we ask him plead to him when he knows that those are the things we need let us offer our petitions to god our heavenly father our response shall be lord hear our prayer lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer through the intercession of the blessed virgin mary may the pope the bishops and all the leaders of the faithful may continue to be strengthened we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer. through the intercession of the blessed virgin mary may the government leaders work to bring peace and justice to all of us we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer through the intercession of the blessed virgin mary may the women who carry the gift of life within their womb be protected from all harm and receive the health care they need we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer may we turn readily to the mother of god in times of need and join our songs of gladness to us in times of joy we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer may the sick and elderly find strength and hope in the love of god and may the souls of our departed especially of cyril montero and alice natal montero rejoice eternally in heaven we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer may the lord hear 
all the prayers and intercessions we hold in the silence of our hearts and grant them to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, incline your merciful ear to our prayers. We plead to you and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call upon you. We make this prayer to you in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of our holy Church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might Prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb, 
who would wipe away our F efficiency offenses you place her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness and so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we acclaim holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit Remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our pope and Peter Paul our bishop and all the clergy Remember also our brothers and sisters and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin Mary mother of God Blessed Joseph as spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I'm not worthy, that you enter under my roof, but the holy is your and my soul shall be healed. Fill it up and 
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserved Blessed Mary in our Immaculate Conception through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. very privileged this evening to announce the felicitation of our prominent guests, donors and our contractors. Firstly, I would like to thank our dear provincial of Karnataka Jesuits, Father Dinesh's Vas, for permitting us to construct this beautiful grotto of our dear Mother Mary. Due to his work commitment, he was not able to make it today but we feel his presence amongst us. He has sent his good wishes and prayers to us. Walter Pinto is the main man behind this beautiful grotto of our dear Mother Mary. He is the proprietor of Walter Corporation from Womanjur and has a vast experience of 25 years in building grottos, shrines, altars, sanctuaries, rosary gardens, and so on. He has completed more than 1,500 projects in various religious institutions, churches, convents, and residents. He has even exported them to countries abroad. Due to his other project work, Mr. Walter was not able to make it, and his brother, Mr. Lancy Pinto, is here amongst us. I request Mr. Lancy Pinto to kindly come for the to felic to be get felicitated. <laughs> kindly uh, give applause. On July 7th, 1921, he was the founder of India Cloth House and Rexin Center, Mangalore. He was fondly called as the King of Rexin. He was also a board member at St. Vincent Ferrer Church, Valencia, for 18 years and a member of the Karnataka Government Land Tribunal Committee for three years. Late Alice Natal Montero was born on December 16th. 1934. She was an executive board member of Cheshire Home Valencia and various other NGOs for several years. She had also sponsored five seminarians for their priesthood. They were married on June 29, 1949 and were blessed with seven children and as a thanksgiving they had built a grotto at their residence Nandan in Valencia 
on January 6, 1976. Ever since, the entire Montero family has great devotion to Mother Mary. Late Alice Montero was buried in the same grave of that of her beloved husband on July 7, 2021, on his 100th birthday. Mr. Boniface and Merlin Montero and family have donated this grotto in loving memory of their parents. Now, I request Mr. Boniface and Merlin Montero to kindly come forward and be felicitated. A Bishop Emeritus, Most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Paul de Souza, along with Father Melvin Pinto and Father Rock Tessa to honor our donors. Father Norbert de Souza to kindly come forward and offer a memento as a token of love and appreciation to our dear Bishop Emeritus Most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Paul de Souza. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all the others. On behalf of my parents and family, I would like to thank Emeritus Bishop Aloysius Paul de Souza for inaugurating and blessing the newly built grotto, and to all the other priests who have joined in celebrating the Holy Mass. A big thank you to Father Melvin for preaching the homily, and Father Maxim for your constant support and guidance, and Father Rocky, parish priest of Valencia. We would also like to thank the choir who has helped us in participating in the Holy Mass devotely. Last but not the least, thank you Walter Corporation for structuring and building the grotto in fond remembrance of our grandparents, late Cyril and Alice Montero, and to all of you for being a part of this memory. Wishing you all a happy feast and a good evening. Thank you, Patricia. Now I request Father Maxim to uh, speak a few words. I take this opportunity from my, on behalf, and also on behalf of Fatima Retreat House, especially to thank Bishop Emeritus, uh, most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Paul de Souza. Whenever I have requested, called him for any occasion, he has joyfully, he has come. So thank you, Bishop, for celebrating this Holy Eucharist and praying for us. And also I want to thank uh, our beloved rector, Melvin Pinto, uh, rector of Aloysius Institutions, a great support for me, a great a guide for me. So thank you, Father Melvin, for sharing your thoughts and views on today's gospel. And also, parish priest, uh, for the rock desa, due to some reasons he has gone, uh, he wanted to be here for the whole program, but he couldn't be here. So I remember him, and also all the concelebrants, reverend sisters who are here, and also our loving donors, and our contractor, and all my dear friends, for your precious presence, may Jesus bless your family through the intercession of our dearest mother, Mary. I want to specially thank today uh, Mr. Patrick, Stephen, Subhash, and Ashok, and the entire FRH staff for their dedicated service. My special thanks to Suman, who did the MC of today's program. And once again, on behalf of the whole community, I thank 
all of you and wish you a happy feast. My special thanks to the choir members. They have gone and also the altar servers. Thank you and God bless you. Have a good evening. Christa Mae Tu Vamchi